I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates. Go out and sketch a strawberry clover instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch the strawberry clover by applying what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have the lesson kit. Help this small business by clicking the like button, subscribing to this YouTube channel, and checking out future lesson crates at naturesketchcrate.com. First, collect all your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Head out to a garden, park, your backyard, and sketch clover or something similar. Today, I'm sketching some strawberry clover that I picked. Remember, this is just a sketch. The most important thing is to relax and enjoy your time in nature. Don't get too caught up with accuracy. So first, you want to use your pencil to draw a light rough sketch of the plant. And we want to make sure you know where you want that plant situated and what you want it to look like on your page before you start drawing. The easiest thing is just to draw what you have. So laying it right down on your page and just kind of tracing and this seed head is a little old. Looks like it's ready to crumble up off the uh, stem here. And you could Frankenstein some of your pieces too. You don't have to do the plant exactly as it is. You can take some pieces from another plant and maybe you want this flower head instead or you want some of these leaves instead or these leaves look pretty nice. Maybe you want to use those. You can add, put those at the end or a different, even a different seed head. Maybe you have one that's more green like our step-by-step. So you don't have to stick with what is actually on the plant. You can take from other clovers nearby and change things a little bit if you want. You don't have to stick exactly with what you have in front of you. This is your sketch. Make it your own. You can do that. One way you can make it your own is by deciding what plant pieces you want to include. And maybe you do want to include some of these long, wispy little pieces here. And you can decide how much of the tap root you want to add and how many roots you want to add, if any, and what direction they go in. After you draw lines to represent where these stems and flower heads and seed heads are and leaves and such, then these are really, really light, rough lines. You can make marks to help you figure out where things like the little seed flowers here, the dried up flowers are, and where the, like this kind of golden part ends and where the pink kind of starts. And then just go ahead and move that to the side and then you, you have a kind of rough idea of where everything is and about the rough idea of the sizing. So you don't have to spend a lot of time going back and forth trying to figure that out. And your view of this might be a little bit different from mine, but I'm just going to start here left to right and draw in the different flower parts. I'm not being super exact. As you can see, the number is probably different. I'm just doing a rough representation, real quick sketch with some light marks. And the sizing might be a little different as well. It might not be exact, it might be a little too big or a little too small. There's actually more flowers on the flower head. And that's okay. This is just a sketch. I'm just using some slightly harder marks. And I'm just starting one end to the other and just kind of drawing them in because I have 
a pretty good base sketch here. Another way you can do this is by just drawing in simple shapes and then bringing them all together with the stems. And then adding the details slowly. Didn't add this one in, but I kind of want to add it in now. And you might find this a little bit challenging to do at first, but the more you do it, the easier it will get. A little bit of practice. And don't be too hard on yourself. Don't expect to get things exact. You'll never be able to improve if you don't give yourself a chance to make mistakes. And this flower head, or the seed head, seems a little bit big, and I'm going to erase it a little bit. Sometimes when you trace on the outside, I'm not really worried about those marks. Sometimes when you trace on the outside, it can make it a little bit big. And I wasn't taking that in consideration. So I'm gonna redraw this. And see, this flower head might be a little big too. Let's draw these in really rough. I'm not counting how many there are. I'm just doing it real quick. Just adding some in to get a representation of this flower. I just want to relax. I don't want to worry too much about the details. So I can kind of mark this to make it a little bit smaller. So when I put paint, I'll make sure I work within that space. Again, just using a combination of light marks, followed by some harder dark marks. Again, this is just going to be a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger than my actual plant because I traced on the outside and that's fine. I can write on the side here that the plant itself is a little bit smaller than the drawing. It's good to make some notes about your sketch anyway. This is kind of like a journal. You can write about what you were thinking, how are you feeling, what you heard, where you were, just kind of on the outside here. You could include the date. I always include the common name and scientific name, just to keep things simple. I encourage you to add more if you like. So that's a real simple drawing, just real quick. And I'm going to add in the common name and scientific name. I think I might just add it, I'm trying to decide which side it would look better on. Maybe I'll move this to the side for a second. And I think I like it right here. I'm gonna draw a little small. This is the strawberry clover. I'll move this back over so I can try to keep the same view. And every time you move your head, the your view of this plant will change just a little bit. And so it might change your drawing a little, and that's fine. This is just a sketch. I'll erase this a little bit more. I'm perfectly perfect with a little bit of smudginess there. And now I'm going to move on to adding some paint. Next, you want to add some paint. So I've already revived my paints that I use for the step-by-step -step, so I don't have to remix them. But if they're not vibrant enough or you don't have enough, you may want to remix them using your paints. So I always like to have those on hand as well. So for the first step, I'm gonna take this wettest, lightest green color here I pre-mixed 
and I'm just going to add it to all the green areas. And there isn't any green really in here. There's a little hint of it. So I might add just a tiny bit. Make sure my brush is really low on pigment. Add a tiny bit in there. And also you can notice that I did enlarge the strawberry clover for the step-by-step -step lesson. So feel free to make your strawberry clover larger if you need a bigger space to paint in. So go ahead and fill in all those green areas, just referring to your plant that you have, you're drawing from. It doesn't need to be exact, and if you end up outside of the lines, that's okay too. And I'm working within this space, I'm kind of ignoring this drawing area out here. And this is very brown. This is a bit of an old seed head. So just really roughly adding that in. And clean off my brush. And then I'll paint in the clover pink. Now this is dry. You can dab your finger on top to see. And if you don't wipe your finger over it because that might smudge it. So I'm going to take this clover pink, kind of the wet, lightest, wettest. And to make sure it's light enough, well, the clover kind of varies. You can see it varies a little bit in how dark it is. So some are a little bit light and some are a little darker, but that's looks about right to me. So I tested on my test strip. And I'm going to just add it into this top area where you see the pink. And clean off my brush. I'm going to take this other color, the clover yellow color, and dab it off of my towel and test it out. Looks good. Might be a little yellow. That's eh, fine. I'm adding more water, make it a little bit better. It looks good. Dab it off on my towel after picking some up. And I think there's a little bit of yellow in here in the seed head this time. So I'm going to add that in. It's a little bit drier. And as well as um, some of these areas, they're all dried up. So I'm going to add that in there too. Unlike with our step-by-step, -step, this is a little bit of a dried up clover. Most of it has a lot of dry areas. Even these leaves here have a little bit of dry areas on it. And a little bit of paint there dripped on it. That's okay. Just a sketch. I'm gonna add that in here. Maybe a little bit more. Since it's still wet, I can add a little bit more to that. And I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna move my palette. And I want to add some white over the green. So I'm going to shake up my white and get a little bit more because there isn't much left in my palette. And I need to be careful because I did almost get that on my painting, but that's okay. Any mistakes make it just perfectly imperfect, and I am totally fine with that because this is just a sketch, just a practice. Pick up a little bit and dab it off and add it in these areas with the green. Still gonna add it to the seed head. Add it over everything. It looks good to add it. If I forget something, it's okay, but you can always go back and add more or change it a little bit from before. I'm going to clean off my brush 
And then I'm gonna add some of the clover red. I'll make sure this is dry before adding it. Feels dry. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that. And test it out on my paper just to make sure it's right. And I'm gonna roll my tip to make it a little easier. And maybe you'll see on the reference, it might be a little different from my point of view. There's just some areas that are a little bit darker on these upper flowers on the seed head. Let's add that in there. And I still preserve some of that lighter color underneath. So I'm cleaning up my brush and I'm going to pick up the light rusty color. Dab it off my towel and test it out. Looks pretty good. I'm going to add that to these little dots on the seed head. And this is dry when I'm adding it. And again, I wasn't really exact with the location. I'm going to add it to these really dry stems and leaves as well. They have very light, rusty color to them for the most part. Then I'll add it to the bottom flower head flowers here that are dried up. off my brush and let that kind of dry I'll pick up a little bit of green dab it off on my towel this is the green I had mixed beforehand for my step-by-step -step. I'm just gonna add it to the areas that look a little bit darker to me so some parts of these leaves are a little bit light and a little bit dark and see kind of in the center of the light line um, edges where the light's hitting it just gives a bit of contrast helps it pop off that page and for me part of the stem for the seed head is a little bit on the dark side so I'm just going to add a very thin line and you can do that by just barely touching the tip of the brush to the paper and slowly moving your hand down while resting it on the table to get that line if you're doing it in the small format instead of a large format like our step-by-step. -step. It's on the smaller side and often overlooked, but such a great little plant. Now this is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of the darker green. A little bit too much on my brush, I'll just dab it off on the towel. I'm going to add a little bit here in between these because I can see some green there. I'm not being exact again, I'm just kind of adding it in. It might be a little too dark and that's okay. It's just a sketch. It's another thing like if you want to make sure to note about it being a little too dark or anything that you did that you didn't really like, instead of changing it just right on the side, a little bit note about the way it actually looked and any mistakes you might have made. Don't spend too much time worrying about those little mistakes. I think they make it just so beautiful and perfectly perfect. Lastly, I'm going to put a little bit of the dark clover rust in, and I'm gonna start with the dry areas. I'll probably get the flower head last. These are all dry already. I'm gonna start left to right still, but usually I do top to bottom, but this is still just a little bit wet. I'm adding this sparingly to these dried areas, making sure to preserve some of that lighter color underneath to add the contrast. I'm 
and just add a little bit. Make sure you don't cover the entire area with it. And these seeds are pretty dark in general, so I'll be a little he more heavy handed with those than the seed head. Now I'm just kind of adding it here and not being exact. I'm just in the same general spot you see it on your plant. And last thing, I'm going to add it to the seed head. It is dry now. Oh, it actually isn't. I got a little bit of paint on there. So I might have to let that dry first and then add a little more. And I have some green here. I could either turn that into another little stem coming off or just leave it imperfectly perfect again. A little smudge. You can also take your brush and kind of flick it over your paper adding some paint spots and that might make it a little more consistent with the messiness of any paint spots if you want it to look more consistent. But I like those little messes and I like to leave them there. It is just a sketch. I'll test that this is dry. Looks good. So I'm going to add a little tiny bit of this color, the rusty color these flowers. Like I said, I got a little heavy handed on the green. That's fine. Cleaning off my brush, let this dry and add some ink lines. So lastly, I'm going to add some ink lines. I'm going to use the 005 Black Micron. This is the smallest tip micron and just kind of draw or redraw some of the lines. Again, not being real exact, just proximate of this plant. So I can get a quick representation of it. More relaxing this way, just not worrying too much about the details. Just observing it and adding in what you see initially. And keeping it simple. Just redrawing those lines. Look at my plant while I redraw those in. Again, I like to start from top to bottom. I'm being a little bit more exact about these lines, but really I'm not counting how many flowers there are, even how many rows. I'm just kind of drawing them in. not being exact about the color placement, making sure I'm getting flowers. The sizing is a bit off. Those are all the things you can note on the side here, if you like, so your future self will know what happened. But this is just a sketch and just a little practice for you to relax and spend some time in nature. Next I'll use the O1 Micron, which is just a slightly thicker tip, so slightly larger tip. And I'll use that to add in some of the details that don't stand out a lot, but need to be just a little bit darker. This will be a little different from your step-by-step -step because this is a smaller drawing, if you're doing it this way. If you're drawing an enlarged version of the clover like our step-by-step, -step, you'll find the needs for the different pens to be about the same. So I just do this in the lightly darker areas to give some areas a little bit more separation. But I 
to use it sparingly. You don't want to have too many dark lines. You just want a few. Gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look when you have a few lines that are just a little bit darker. Might use it on some things that are a little softer edged or just to add some line variation in different areas. Or even to cover up something that you don't like. And I'm going to thicken up the scientific name as well. Lastly, I'm going to use the 08 Black Micron, which has the thickest tip of all of three. Because it does have a thicker tip, it does leave more ink, and the ink can smudge before it dries. Although it is waterproof if you're using the pigment microns after you add the ink. So I'm just going to add it in some of these darker areas here. Give a little bit of a harder, darker edge so that it comes off the page. Again, adding some more dimension to it with those dark lines. Make sure they vary a little bit. And I like how this looks. So I'm going to stop there. And looking now, actually, I think I want a little bit more of that brown rusty color inside the seed head. So I'll pick up a little bit more of that. And it's always okay to go back and add more after the ink has dried a little bit and it dries pretty fast. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that rusty color and I'm just going to add it sparingly throughout. It didn't really seem apparent to me until now. And maybe I'm going to add just one more little layer of these dark areas since I went a little heavy handed with the green. And I really like how this looks now it looks good to me and you can add some observations here to the outside about your mood how you felt during the day maybe the weather or what you heard or even how you felt about doing this sketch any kind of observations it's kind of like your little journal we are done great job observing your world keep practicing please share your art on our Facebook fan art page and hashtag nature create art to have it featured on our social media. Please check out naturesketchcreate.com for future lesson crates and to sign up for our newsletter for regular updates. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and had a chance to relax a little.